What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and today I don't know how many of these videos you'll see. Maybe this will be the only one. Maybe the other trades just won't be, you know, that great. But so far the the trades haven't been great, but the names have been kind of big already. Uh you could already tell by the thumbnail that there's uh, you know, some names. A couple of interesting ones based on the value they got and also kind of where they went. Uh, a little surprising for and honestly, both of uh, the main trades, really. I do like the moves. The players uh, getting... The, the the teams getting the players make a lot of sense. The teams trading the players really do not. Uh, once again, I kind of feel like trading a good player off for next to nothing, if you're a tank-worthy team, is really just tanking, right? Like, it's, it's the way to tank... Without losing your job, kind of, isn't it? I, I feel like that's the case. Uh, but, of course, the main one we're talking about, well, not the main one, but the first one we're talking about was the first one that I actually seen last night. Uh, Avery Williamson to the Steelers, which I guess, to be fair, isn't the worst play in the world. Of course, I think he's grading really high, but I don't know how you know good the... Uh, actually, didn't look. I think I seen it on Twitter, but uh, I don't know how reliable the grade system is because obviously it's uh sometimes they're like perfect sometimes they're really really bad uh oh no maybe not maybe not this uh on pro football focus it says 43.2 right now I, I did see a lot of jets fans saying that he uh he, he's been playing pretty poorly a fifth round pick for the uh from the steelers with avery williamson and a seventh round pick i suppose uh, as far as the uh, Steelers go, definitely need a little bit of linebacker hope. And considering it was only a fifth round pick, gaining a seventh with him. I mean, we remember what happened. The, the Patriots gave up a second round pick for Mohamed Sanu. And he really didn't do anything for the team. Avery Williamson, at the very least, isn't a downgrade at linebacker. So, I mean, I suppose it could have been a lot worse. He is 28 years old. And I honestly do not think... Well, I mean, I wouldn't say I don't I don't think the Steelers are re-signed him, but even if they didn't re-sign him, it's not that big of a loss, honestly. Uh, of course, the Jets really pretty much getting rid of everyone for pretty much nothing. I will say, once again, 28 years old, thought to be uh, a guy that needs to be re-signed. And, you know, I don't know how much that'll cost because linebackers, they have still been going for quite a bit, which is really strange because, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be always bringing up the Packers, but the Packers, they never value linebacker. And fair enough, they don't pay much for coverage linebacker, but coverage linebackers get paid. Like, nobody wants to draft them, yet when a good one shows up in free agency, teams love to spend on them. It's, it's a very strange thing. I don't know if it's there's maybe a mathematics to it where coverage linebacker just hasn't been worth drafting, but I don't know. Avery Williamson to the Steelers, I mean, I guess. Uh, you would have thought maybe the Eagles, the Packers... Uh, the Chiefs, maybe. I, I know that the cap situation isn't perfect for those teams, but it's a perfect segue because maybe it's not so bad after all for some teams. The freaking Saints! They're getting Quan Alexander. We do not know what the uh, the pick is just yet, but apparently uh, Quan Alexander to the Saints for a conditional pick and Kiko Alonso. Usually those conditional picks are kind of bad, uh, apparently it's supposed to be a fifth round pick, uh, but I'm not really sure. Kiko Alonso and a fifth round pick is what I'm hearing for Quan Alexander, which Quan Alexander, uh, you know, maybe it's my inner Madden talking, but young, decent player. Of course, the, uh, the injury concerns as of late, well, maybe not as of late, just in general, you know, he, he hasn't been the healthiest player in, uh, you know in the league, but he's still been, you know, decently, he's played a decent amount of snaps this season, at least. I believe he should be back really soon. It's, I mean, it seems at least. Uh, of course, the last three seasons, he has been pretty injury prone, can't lie, you know, missed 10 games in 2018, uh, six games in uh, 2019, and so far, I think he's missed two, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, he has, he has missed a significant amount of of uh of time and right now his number is pretty high i believe 
the Saints this year are going to have to pay him, uh, what is this, maybe eight and a half mil? And then the next year, 11 mil. And then surprisingly, in 2023 and 2024, if I'm if I'm reading this right, it's like nothing. It's like a super front-loaded contract, it looks like. Well, maybe not front-loaded. I, I don't know. It's like kind of front. I, it's a really strange contract. I don't know. He's getting paid a lot of money, though. I just don't see how the Saints have the money to have every player in the NFL on their team. I just don't get it. I know they pushed back some of their contracts, but like... Are they just going to have to release every single player in like the next couple of years? Like, I, d I just don't understand how the Saints, they could be so tight on cap. I think they were like entering the uh, last offseason with like negative cap or something, and somehow they added talent. I just don't get it. Of course, that one, just like with uh, Avery Williamson, you would have thought maybe the Eagles, of course, that cap situation is really bad. And then the Packers maybe should have went for him. I don't hate it from the Packers to let it, you know, it's once again. It's prior on uh, my inner Madden speaking. And, of course, the potential for Quan when he is healthy that I'd want him. But at the same time, I get it. Green Bay has had uh, some some downfall issues with injury-prone players. And, uh, obviously, as far as linebacker goes, he's one of the most injury-prone players. But at the same time, they, they got to do something. I want to see, even if it's... Even if it's the worst DT in the world, I do not care. I really don't care. We need to add somebody. Uh, and now, once again, we do have one last player, the most shocking of all the trades, in my opinion. But the perfect segue, talking about the Packers. Uh, AJ Dillon, the first Packer, I believe, to uh, get a positive COVID test. Uh, gotta love it, right? Gotta love it. So... Aaron uh, Brown, Aaron Jones, I believe, should be back next week, assuming there's no contact tracing that the running back room is all infected or, you know, Rodgers. Oh, please don't. Please, just, pl the Packers have been iffy already the way it is. We do not need Rodgers being quarantined and whatnot. But Aaron Jones should be back hopefully next week. But A.J. Dillon, a guy that has had to play a decent bit because of Aaron Jones being injured, backing up. Jamal Williams, who's been pretty solid, of course, has the COVID. Uh, it's really strange that, like, I, I just don't understand how he has COVID if he literally just played. So, like, did he play the game with COVID? and like, Or did he, like, get it right? I don't know how you would get it after. Maybe, I mean, we lost, but maybe celebrated with someone. I don't know. I don't know when if it showed when he had it, so... Or when he, uh, well, I want to say contracted it, but when, you know, when they tested him. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the only news from the Packers today <laughs> so far. And then, of course, the biggest of them all, the most shocking, wildest one I get. He's on a contract year, but Desmond King to the Titans for a sixth round draft pick absolutely shocking stuff i'm not really sure what they're gonna do with the titans uh with the titans what he's gonna do for the titans maybe they move him back to corner this man has uh basically been the uh minka fitzpatrick of the league here where he just keeps getting switched at different positions uh i don't see him playing safety i'd say he probably will play cornerback but really good move by the titans once again it's a six-round pick. If you can't afford to re-sign him or you don't want to tag him, it's only a six-round pick. Why not, right? Like, his his number right now is is basically nothing. I think it's like $2 million for a guy like Desmond King who got snubbed on all pro or uh, pro bowl, but he got uh, uh, all pro votes. I, I just do not understand why the uh, the char – I mean, I guess, once again, the Chargers looks like maybe they weren't, weren't going to re-sign him, but – yeah, I know that number is going to be really high for him, for sure. Uh, but still, you, you just, once again, you just keep him if you can't afford him. I mean, honestly, some could debate that they would maybe even get a higher pick from, uh, what is it called? Compensatory. I don't, I don't remember exactly how it goes. I can't remember if it's based on their 
their draft position. I thought it was based on how much they get paid and then how well they play. I don't know. I don't remember, but you got to assume a guy like Desmond King, you're going to get a little bit more back compensatory wise than a sixth round, right? I, I just don't get it. I really just do not understand uh, why they would. I don't know. I really don't know why. I'd imagine he's going to want like 10 to 12 mil per year. So I get the fact that they might not be able to resign him. And they're looking in a tr downward trend, especially after that last second loss to the Broncos. Uh, which, once again, I, I don't get the pass interference call. Maybe I have to rewatch it. But was the ball not vastly overthrown? Like, was there, I mean, maybe you can come back to the ball, I guess. But, like, it is so hard to play defensive back in the league. It is absolutely disgustingly hard. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, after that loss, it's pretty likely the Chargers are probably done for the season, but not a sixth-round giraffe pick. Oh, my Lord. But regardless, uh, those are the names and the moves so far in the trade deadline. Let me know what you guys think of the three trades, which is ironic because of the names, Quan Alexander, Desmond King, and Avery Williamson, who would have thought that Avery Williamson would be the one getting the most compensa compensation and it's for the Jets? I mean, it's not by much, but it's still better than nothing. I once again, I get actually to be fair, Quan Kiko in a fifth. It probably is better, especially considering Quan, I know he is younger, is really injury prone. So I don't know. But regardless, thanks for watching. Uh, I, there still might be two videos left today up on the channel. Could be more. Could be three uh, because, of course, once again, there could be like a really big trade deadline player. But as of right now, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!